Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome to the next episode of Season 3 of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Last episode we watched The Tale of the Midnight Ride, and I realised upon editing that I didn't talk about it for very long at the end, but it does change depending on the episode of each show and depending on if I have a lot to say. But I feel like I definitely could have said more for the last one, because it was a really enjoyable episode and I appreciated it even more upon editing it, because I got to kind of see just bits again and really appreciate it without kind of having in the back of my mind like the copyright issues that I was thinking about. Um, I like how it took a really classic story of the Headless Horseman, uh, which is something that pretty much everybody's heard of, even if you don't know all about Ichabod Crane, Sleepy Hollow and all that type of stuff. I imagine most people have heard of the Headless Horseman in some fashion. So I like how they took an old legend and didn't try and... They didn't try and retell it in the sense of like they were just doing an origin story. The legend existed, as it does in real life. It's a real legend. And they tried to do a whole, well, this is the legend of Sleep Hello, but then little bits actually come true. So I quite enjoyed that kind of retelling of sorts, I suppose. Uh, I quite enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought the characters were all really good. The dance scene was fun. There was a lot of people in the background to look at in funny costumes and funny dancing. I just had some good tension, good action sequences, and a really strong episode to start with. Tucker, I actually don't mind yet. The characters seem to find him like an annoying little brother, particularly Frank, but I thought he seemed okay, but I don't know him like in real life, you know what I mean? So maybe he's going to be more annoying as the series goes on. This episode is called The Tale of Apartment 214. I think maybe it's going to be about an apartment. Maybe it's going to be about apartment 214. <laughs> um, what could it be about? Possibly a ghost story. This show does a lot of really good ghost stories like Tale of the Lonely Ghost, Tale of the Frozen Ghost, which is debatable. I quite enjoyed it. But even elements of like Laughing in the Dark is a ghost story and other things. So maybe it's like in a haunted apartment in an apartment block. Maybe someone moves in, creepy weird stuff starts to happen. We have to kind of investigate what the ghost wants or needs to try and stop it. That could be cool. In terms of who I think is going to tell the story, possibly Sam. They mentioned last episode, um, who was it? Betty Ann said she has a friend called Sam who wants to join the Midnight Society, but she hadn't finished her story yet, so possibly this could be her story. Let's jump into the episode, guys, to find out what it's all about. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below in the comments what you're thinking of the series and if you're enjoying the videos. And there's a Patreon link down below in the comments if you want to watch some episodes early. Let's jump into Series 3. That's four. <laughs> Let's jump into Series 3. That's six. What am I doing? Let's jump into series three, episode two, The Tale of Apartment 214. Put it down, Gary will freak. What is this stuff anyway? Hey, <laughs> are we getting a new member or what? Next week. Oh. I think he's up tonight. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, from the neck up. Hey, <laughs> you want to be dead from the neck down? Well, I do like it. It's kind of like some continuity that, you know, we found out about her last week. She's in next week. I hate moving. And the next week should be her first episode. I love it. Say what? How can you like moving? <laughs> Liking stuff it's around isn't any fun. A nightmare. My story is about moving and about promises. A promise is a pledge, something to rely on. Mm -hmm. You should never break a promise. Because if you do, it might come back to haunt you. Haunted for the ghosts, I think. The of apartment 214. 214, 214. It looked like her parents were going to break up. It's not good. She and her mom had to move into a tiny apartment across town. Oh, that dog's so cute. That was 214. So her neighbors. Hey! Go. You don't park here. I don't think the manager would mind. We're moving in. I am manager. I do mind. You move car now. Don't be so rude. They're just parking up temporarily. Sure. Well, they move yes. stuff. Ass. Okay. Hmm. So it seems to open as she walks past. Maybe it's somebody that wants like a friend. Because it closes when she's not around, so. Snowy there. If that door's open, don't go into it. No. You don't. No. <laughs> you just don't do that. Clearly, like something creepy's going on. Don't go in that house. Flat apartment. 
Oh, some more. What are you doing out here? I thought I heard something. It's gonna close again. Right, so it's definitely trying to entice her in. But not the mother, just the daughter. Who are you? I'm Angela. <laughs> I live in 212. You know who looks I was going to say if she lives 214. She's a ghost. Lives. You just moved into 213, didn't you? Would you want to hang out sometime? Oh. Maybe. Well, I'll see you later then. What do you mean? Yeah. Maybe. Bye. She gives me a... Um, I get the feeling she's like a knockoff hey. Beth. I feel like I reference Lonely Ghost all the time. <laughs> it's a really good episode. And Beth is an icon. Oh! That was an old lady. Don't just go in though. Don't. Mm. It's about time you came to see me. I'm having some tea. Will you join me? No, What's creepy lady. Name? Stacy. That's my nephew Frank and his family. I never had children of my own. Frank promised that I could always live with them, but when his family grew, he got tired of taking care of an old woman, so Which is sad, but there's something not leave. right. He broke his promise? If we were to visit now and again, maybe we wouldn't miss our old friends quite so much. You sure you'd want to be friends with a kid? If you don't mind being friends with an old woman. Right. Let me just say, in normal life, this would be the cutest thing. Like, look, this is lovely. It's so cute. A elderly person and a young person being friends, helping her out. Amazing. But this is you afraid of the dark, right? I don't trust this. Would you mind terribly if I asked you to drop by tomorrow? No. What's up? Nothing. It's just a day on which I prefer not to be alone. No sweat. I'll be there. Promise. This is the day when you do the ritual to take over her body. Something I've like that. I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? You want to come? We got an extra ticket. Really? When? Right now. My mom's getting the Don't break your promise. <gasps> You clearly don't care. Free ticket. Or you would have gone and seen it earlier. She lives next door. You coming or not? Okay. Let me tell my mom. She's crying. <laughs> Stacy, what have you done? No. Madeline? <laughs> oh <God>. <laughs> <laughs> this is creepy. Got a point though. Okay. No one lived in two fourteen. No one lived there for years. It okay. just didn't make sense. All Stacy knew for sure was that Madeline left. Here's the number of the restaurant. Are you sure you're gonna be okay by yourself? <gasps> if you don't she's going out on a date. You're not coming. Oh, she's going with the dad. See, just because we're talking doesn't mean we're definitely getting back together. Understand? Uh, I know. <laughs> Tell Dad I love him. I will. Could it be Madeline? Who is it? She's not going to be there. No. But then the apartment door's going to open. She's going to go and get trapped. <laughs> Creepy. Right. Nice shot, which means the room's going to change. That's how it was before. That was nicely done. Nicely done. You promised to visit me. I didn't want to be alone on that day. Oh. That day is the worst day, and you didn't come. On that day is the day I die. Okay. <laughs> you broke your promise. I think the word you're looking for, Stacey, is I'm sorry, I was selfish. 
<laughs> oh my god. She's flown outside the window. Oh, there's a balcony, isn't there? I feel really bad for her, though. Like, she's died and she's stuck alone in that apartment for like eternity. Don't you dare do anything to that dog, Madeline. Madeline! Oh, dog would never break its promise. The dog will always be there for you. Hi, Madeline. Oh, look at him. You broke your promise. You're just like my nephew. Please don't hurt me. I waited for you all day. She's just a kid. I do feel for her, but she's just a kid. It's very important to make friends, Stacy. Okay. <laughs> you have to be alone. I won't bother you anymore. Madeline. Okay. Are you really that was easy. Nobody wants me. But that was true. I'm not welcome anywhere. I don't want to leave. Oh, poor lady. <laughs> so they rent an apartment oh, with a ghost. Ah, how you like new apartment? It's great. We have so much room. I still don't understand why it's cheaper than 213. <laughs> oh, they're living in 214 now. Bit weird though. Like, you live with a ghost. And that's fine. But she seems harmless on the most part. But what about when you eventually have to move out? Because Madeline wasn't going to be alone anymore. The end. Oh, where's the pouch? The what? Oh, the pouch with the... It was right here before we started. <laughs> Getting on my nerves. Hey, where'd the bucket go? <laughs> Tucker. Where's the bucket? Okay guys, that was my reaction to series three, episode two, The Tale of Apartment 214. That was cute. <laughs> it wasn't particularly scary. I mean, there was the odd little moment with Madeline when she was in the dark and like, why did you break your promise? That were kind of creepy. But on the most part, it wasn't a scary episode, but I don't think it was really meant to be. It was more of a moral tale about sticking to your promises. Now, let's talk about the characters first and I'll talk about my feelings on the actual moral itself so the main girl quite liked her did she make some silly decisions yeah like i would just never just wander into an apartment that wasn't mine even if it was open if i thought someone lived there anyway if it was empty maybe but clearly like the door kept opening and shutting so someone was in there and then the old lady was just like come in and have tea like hi my name is stacy how are you who are you maybe that sort of thing um but i suppose that's much me being a pessimistic man who doesn't trust anybody but it was nice i mean if this wasn't a ghost story like i said in the episode having this relationship between this elderly neighbor and this young younger neighbor is really cute and it's nice that they can spend time together rely on each other or help each other out with jobs and things that the, maybe the elderly lady can't do like if she needs shopping and go and get it for her obviously in this case she didn't need shopping even though she brought it to her because she was a ghost um the problem obviously then lies that the elderly lady got too attached to her. So when the girl ditched her to go to this concert, which I don't agree she should have done, it obviously led to something bad happening. The woman obviously didn't like it and got a bit like, why did you break your promise? Now, what the girl should have done is gone up to 214 and said, hey, I've been invited to this thing tonight. Do you mind if we kind of, kind of come see you tomorrow? Or kind of come see you after the concert? That's what she should have done. But what she did... What she did was just ditch her and go to this new thing, to this new friend. Now, this new friend, I didn't like her because she kind of got the impression that she didn't really want to be a friend. Because when the girl, when Stacey said, should we hang out at some point? Like, we're neighbours, we live right next door to each other. Should we hang out? The girl was like, hmm, maybe. So, like, straight away, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, cool, let's, let's hang out. You know, they might not be friends. But having a neighbour next door, a friend next door, would be cool and really handy. Um, and then even when it went to the concert... The girl was about to go to the concert and get in a car. And as she was going to it, this, this is the way I interpreted it. 
she walked, she walked past her, so I was like, oh, I've got another ticket, do you want to come? That's what, it wasn't like, hey, I've got a Colin concert in a few days, it'd be cool if you came, we'd get to hang out, get to know each other. So I just didn't like that girl. So when Oliver was like, did you make a new friend? And Stacey was like, yes, I did. It's like, this friend doesn't want, does not want to hang out with you. And like I said in the episode as well, she really did give me vibes of like a low rent Beth. And that's not the actress's fault. That's just, I feel like, just the way she, their attitude was kind of like, what Beth was like to the extreme. And this was like a, a nicer version of that. But still, got the impression she didn't really want to hang out. So, yeah, I don't think Stacey should have just ditched her for the concert. However, that might just be me like one of my pet peeves in life is being ditched or if someone if we have a plan with somebody and they don't show up and they, or they stand you up or they just don't turn up to it and go and do something else that's it winds me up to no end and I'm probably really annoyed about it because it happened to me a few days ago I had plans to go out and meet a friend for a few drinks and I rang them just before we were going to meet up and they said they cancelled and it was like but they only told me that they weren't going to show up because I rang them. You know what I mean? Like, if I'd never rang them, I would have been waiting out somewhere for them to show up and they never they never came. So, I don't think. And I did enjoy the woman's episode. I thought she was quite a nice motherly character. She didn't really do a lot. She wasn't a massive part of this, but she was nice. Now, the moral of the story was really good. And I liked the fact that it was like, don't break your promises. I think that's an important message to tell kids and to adults and to anybody. If you make a promise, stick to it. That's a very good message. Do I feel like it was a little unusual at the end? Yeah, because whilst it was nice that they lived with the old lady now, or at least, the, well, they both lived with her, but I don't think the mum knew she was there. I don't really know. It kind of got the impression that only Stacey really knew. And that was really cute. But one day, Stacey and the mum are going to move out. Or die. Or what if the dad moves in? Then there are going to be too many people in that apartment for the old lady's liking. Or if they get back together with the dad, she wants to move out and move back into the family home. So it doesn't feel like a solution to the problem. It just feels like it's plastering the problem over if that makes sense the best answer really would have been to get the old lady to move on <laughs> which i know is obviously not the easiest thing to do but like this just felt like it was great for a while but it's going to lead to the same problem in the future if she doesn't move on so yeah in terms of the midnight society stuff it was fun i'm excited to see sam next episode i'm actually really liking tucker even though he's that annoying little little brother little kid character i'm quite enjoying him at the moment i think he's he's funny interesting to watch so yeah i'm excited to see sam next week Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the action. As always, my name is Scott. I hope you guys are well. Take care of yourselves and staying safe. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know down the, below in the comments what you thought of the episode, if you enjoyed the episode, and if you enjoyed my reaction. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys. I'll see you all next week for the next episode of You Afraid of the Dark, Season 3. Bye, guys, and take care.